Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna do a marker drawing because it's been a while since I sketched with markers and I really miss them. So I thought it'd be fun just to do an easy breezy, lemon squeezy, relaxing little illustration. I love to draw still life type illustrations and I've had this um, picture of a honey dipper sitting in a jar of honey with some little flowers in the background in my one of my folders on Unsplash for the longest time and I thought why not sketch that I I tend to go for really bright and colorful things but this just looks so calming and cozy that I thought oh it's perfect it's perfect on a winter day right to draw something like this and so I did now this took me almost an hour to draw so I just want to let you know this whole thing this whole process took me about an hour so don't expect it to take you 10 minutes because you're watching the time-lapsed replay I'm starting in after sketching with a color erase pencil. Those are erasable pencils by Prismacolor. I really like them because when I go over them with markers, they just kind of like dissolve into the marker and then I don't even see my lines. So, and I can go in and erase them if I do have a stray line here and there. So they're one of my all the time used products. So definitely recommend them if you like to do alcohol marker art because you know, it's just so easy to get rid of the lines if you want to, but they just kind of disappear they will under watercolor too which is kind of fun and then i decided to go with one of the darker colors that i saw which is kind of like a honey brown color and get some of my shadows in I like to do shadows right off the bat because I find that a little nerve wracking. If I work light to dark with marker, it's it can be really hard to be brave with those dark values at the end because, well, what if you ruin it, right? So if you do those dark values at the beginning, there's nothing to worry about. I like to turn my work around as I am working, especially if I've got something like a vase or a jar or anything symmetrical because you can get kind of confused while you're drawing stuff like that, especially when you're sitting down and your work is flat because you're going to have a bit of distortion anyway. So I turn my work around a lot while I'm working to see if things look okay. Actually, I think the jar looks okay at this stage, but I do think I kind of, uh, I didn't, I second guessed my my drawing as I went towards the end and I did round it out a little bit here and there and I, and I honestly I think I overdid it because like I'm looking at this back right now and I'm like you know that's about right so you know it doesn't hurt to take a break <laughs> instead of drawing it all in one go so just kind of keep that in mind if you're working on a project it does not hurt to step back for a while come and look at it with fresh eyes because then you'll see exactly where things are off. Now something else that I want to point out with the markers, especially really pale tones, often they dry lighter than they look uh, because you've got the wet paper and the wet paper is looking a little bit darker, but once that alcohol evaporates and you've just got the pigment left behind, it will look a little bit lighter. It's not a, as big of a shift with your darker colors, but those really, really pale pastels and pale grays, they tend to disappear um, when they dry out. So it's just kind of something you want to keep, keep a keep an eye on. The sketch markers, I think sketch markers is the biggest collection of colors available at 448. I don't know if 448 is their all the time collection because I'm thinking that 48 of those colors might be like a limited edition. But in any event, even 400 is more than any other marker company. They do offer refills and replacement nibs and they have sets on Amazon, but I did see singles and refills available on Marker Universe and Ellen Hudson in the United States. So um, this might be a tougher brand to find in different parts of the world. They are a Russian company, but they've uh, they've made it over here to America. So um, well, I don't know. I don't know what the availability elsewhere is, but I do like that they are a more cost effective option for Copics. But they have that Japanese nib that is so similar to the Copic sketch nibs, and uh, they're just really nice to use. Size wise, they are smaller than a sketch marker, and they feel a little bit lighter. I don't have any Chow markers to compare them to, but I reckon they're probably pretty close to a Copic Chow. If you're just wondering. Uh, size-wise how they compare. Sometimes they have sales on Amazon, so if you are curious about this line, uh, they are not a budget line. They are definitely not budget markers, so um, if you're curious about them, you might want to see if there's any sets that would give you the colors that you'd want to experiment with. Um, and if not, try one of those stores that sells them open stock if you're curious. I'm curious about, about the refill inks because the refill inks are much cheaper than the Copic refill inks. And their refill inks are the size that Copic used to be, that bigger, like I think 25 or 30 milliliters. So um, 
I'm really excited about that because I think with 448 colors, I'll be able to find refills for any of my Copics because I refuse. I refuse to buy those tiny little uh, <laughs> Copic refills that are more expensive than what I used to pay for the big refills. So that's just my, that's my, uh, <laughs> that's my issue. <laughs> but I do really like the inks. I haven't seen any speckling with these inks. And um, every time I've used them, I've been really, really pleased with them. I have the Desert set of 36 and then the pop i think it's called pop uh set of 48 the uh the set in the wallet the 36 set in the wallet that i reviewed um those were every marker was in perfect condition the 48 set of the pop markers some of the words some of the labeling was rubbed off on the marker caps on like one end of the cap the the name would be uh smudge so i don't know what that's all about but i just wanted to mention that in case you were ordering off amazon um now I'm going in with some Derwent drawing pencils, and they're, they're a very muted range of pencils. They're gorgeous. I really recommend them. They're all light, fast colors. They're very nice if you like to do um, animals, wildlife, that sort of thing. They're just gorgeous. And the size of the leads, the leads are like 5.5 millimeters. They are very strong. They're very robust. The casing is big, so you don't have to worry about your leads breaking. They're very well supported, even though they're a relatively soft pencil. Not quite as soft as like the Color Soft line, but they're pretty soft. They're just delightful. Um, I can't recommend them enough because they're also quite affordable too when you're comparing them with a light fast pencil. So I'm trying out this product here. This is a, a new to me product there. Uh, I don't know if they're available yet. They weren't the last time I checked, but um, they are the Artix acrylic brush markers and they come all ready to go. Like you don't have to start them and they're extremely flexible. So I'm not a calligrapher, but I think they would be really nice if you did brush lettering. But anyway, I was just kind of playing around with them here. They don't seem to be as opaque as say like a Posca pen or one of the markers that you have to like pump to get going. But, um, man, they, the ink is so smooth and they just activate so that you don't need to activate them. They're all ready to go. So I'm hoping that they last really well. Um, they performed and they were shipped to me during the winter. So I'm always nervous about acrylic paint products shipped to me in the winter because I live in a, a very cold area and they, um, they, the ink was all flowing really well. I haven't tested if they will re-wet if you go over them with water. They shouldn't if they're acrylic, but I'm just surprised at how well they flow for that type of product. So I'm going back in now with the sketch markers. Um, I am adding more darks in where I feel like I need a little bit more depth or transparency. I love doing mixed media with markers. I feel like it's the best of both worlds and it does save a lot of time. Um, and plus it's just so fun. And I don't know if you caught a glimpse of my red glasses there. Those are my favorite glasses and I like, lost them for like two weeks. They're actually sitting on the shelf in front of my fun art desk, which I hadn't gotten a chance to get to the last couple of weeks. So I was pretty excited to find those. <laughs> Because I was either wearing a other pair of plastic framed glasses because they're light. Um, that was like my previous prescription because my the newer ones that I bought, I don't like them because they're heavy. They're metal frames. So I'm always wearing these red ones. <laughs> so I'm so happy to find them again. And I'm just going in, adding some more gray underneath my little flowers in the background because I felt they needed a little bit more. Um, the shadows are very soft in this reference photo. And it just seemed too stark to me to have that really dark um like honey pot and then have everything else so pale i felt like i needed a, something to bridge those um those values a little bit more so adding a little bit more shadow was helpful there and you can do that with a colored pencil and then dissolve it with a lighter marker if you want just try not to get too much pencil lead on your markers and scribble them off onto a scrap paper before you recap them so you don't end up clogging those uh, expensive nibs you don't want to you don't want to mess up those beautiful nibs and um yeah just kind of putting puttering around with a pencil and uh and that's pretty much it. I do like to go in with a gel pen because those acrylic paint pens weren't quite opaque enough. So a little gel pen will give me those really bright highlights that I want. This is an Artisan number six. I'm surprised it flowed. I've had so much trouble with those. Um, I always have trouble with like the jelly rolls, any of those skinnier ones. I like the Uniball Signo, but I'm out of those and I'm uh, nervous about ordering them in the winter that they might freeze. So I'm making do with what I have. But um, that's pretty much all there is to it. Just, you know, kind of fussing around adding some more depth with the leaves and uh, yeah i'm gonna call it a day i hope you enjoyed this tutorial thank you so much for watching and please give me a thumbs up before you go happy crafting <laughs>